I have our call from an inmate at the R.J. Donovan Correctional Facility, San Diego, California. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, say or dial 5 now. Thank you for using... Hey, what up, homie? Hello? Shoot, what up, homie? Uh, I just uh, uh, check on you. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm just kidding, man. Yeah, uh, my name is Navi Soy. I'm an inmate here housed at the Donovan State Prison. And I've been doing time since I was 16 years old. It's been a struggle for me to prevail in here. And what I'm looking for really in this is, you know, uh, pen pals, uh, friends, you know, legal help, visits, man, anything to help me, you know, pass up time in here. It's a little difficult during these times, especially during COVID. Not only that, but, um, you know, I want to reach out to the youngsters out there, you know, the youth, like, stay away from the gang, you know what I mean? Like, it might look cool, it'll sound nice, you know, it might seem like people trying to stay loyal to you, but, man, your own best friend could be your own worst enemy because they know so much about you, you know what I mean? And it all starts by telling a story to another friend and trying to hear something bad about you, and they don't speak bad about you because that's a habit that they're trying to keep. And it's really the devil that's doing that to them, you know? But the only thing that can keep yourself away from that is you yourself. You are your own worst enemy. If you got a positive mind and a good head over your shoulder, you'll keep doing good, you know? That's pretty much what I got to say first and foremost. Okay, what's your nationality? I'm Cambodian in Thailand. Where are you from out here in the streets? I'm from Sacramento, TRG, 45th Avenue. Okay, can you go ahead and tell us about your childhood, your upbringing, and what led you to the Tiny Rascals? Alright, um, first and foremost, I was born in Seattle, I'm in Tacoma, Washington, right next to Seattle. My father was murdered, and, which caused me to get adopted by my grandparents from my mother's side. Then we moved to California, Fresno, where my mother was murdered. She was shot in the back of the head by my own gang, the Tiny Rascals which I did not know, of course, at the time, when I was just a baby, two years old. And we moved from Fresno to Modesto, and Modesto, I was, I was about five years old, and I began to see light in the streets, and we were in the ghetto, and, you know I mean, it was real bad out there, and I just grew up around gangs, seeing violence, people getting jumped, and I began to uh, wonder, became curious, went to the back backyard, from the backyard to the alleyways, and pitch dark, I seen gunshots, and it fascinated me in a certain type of way, adrenaline. And, and uh, one day, I went to Sacramento, and I was 10 years old, and I seen 45th Avenue. It was, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, would, I wanted to join a gang because my uncle, he was a part of it. His name is Rankdown. And I got initiated to 46 Tony Rascal Gang, and I was also told that the Asian boys are our worst enemy. And we started to go out and getting our house and shot up, and just to realize that the Asian boys were my own blood cousins. And all this was all for nothing, man. And, um, you know, I got incarcerated at 16 for doing robberies because the pride of being in a gang, the gray bandana, is what I pride for of. And ever since, every time I get into a fight or, you know, meet people or begin to, you know, introduce myself, I always say, my name is Bolo from Sacramento TRG, and everybody will be like, okay. And I've seen it as like a, a glorification of intimidation or, you know, as like a badge of honor and not realizing that there is a more professional side of me and which is knowledge that's, you know, and, credibility of education that I did not know about my side, even though I kept striving to push for this gang that I got jumped into. And later, throughout my life, around 21 years old, I was told the story by my uncle that my own mother was murdered by my, my gang. And I dropped out, man, and, um, and you know, I wanted to begin to prevail my life and see the big picture and that's the next step of changing my life because as a kid, I wish that I would go to school and kept playing football because I run a 4.2 to a 40 yard dash. I could catch, I got the skills, and you know, ever since, 
you know, I, I've been regretting every step of the day of joining a game because a lot of people can be like, I could be a game, I could be as hard as this, I could be hard as that. You're just going to be in competition with your own homies, you know? And you got to realize what the really big picture is and set up your own perceptions in life, you know? Uh, aim high, go for gold. And one thing I did not do in prison was I kept getting into riots, I kept getting into fights. And it was guarding me to scream out Tiny Rascal Gang after every fight. Just for intimidation, it's like fear into people's eyes. And I just became so clever and just so swift with it with my attitude. I call swag tistics that I became my own guy to separate myself from Tiny Rascals and start a whole different generation. But it's always Tiny Rascal and I can't just change it. You know, so it was always stuck in my heart to do. Let me get this clear. Uh, so you uh, got charged at 16, right? And then they went, and then you went to California Youth Authority, right? From there, uh, you went to prison? No, um, I've been doing time since juvenile hall. I, I was never housed at California Youth Authority for some reason. I just, they had me on a speedy trial, and the whole entire time going to a speedy trial, um, they, I think they did something illegally and just kept me in uh, juvenile hall until the age of 19 to find me guilty as an adult. I was tried as an adult at the age of 16 when I first uh, showed up at court. And, you know, there was so much things that wasn't even proper for that situation when I was uh, incarcerated. Uh, uh, what's your sentence? I have 37 years, 8 months for second degree robbery. Uh, two robberies, three counts of assault with firearms, and two counts of uh, I think uh, assault assault with a firearm. Yep. Well, how long have you been incarcerated? I've been incarcerated for 13 years. I'm at since 2009 of November 20th. Um. So, uh, hey, homie, without incriminating yourself, right? Because I don't know who you're going to appeal. Because I know they got that review type thing. You know, 26 and uh, under, right? You go up. A or board and stuff, right? So, uh, can, can you, without any incriminating yourself or other people, right? Can you, uh, in your own words, bro, can you explain how you caught your case and how uh, authorities uh, eventually apprehended you? Um, like you mean like um, what, what, like what led me to do all that stuff? Like pretty much like day where you committed that crime, why we did the crime, and the day they apprehended you, pretty much, like the events that occurred. Oh, um. On November 20th of 2009, I was kicking it at my girlfriend's house. Me and my girl on the stairs, uh, we were hugging each other like what lovers would do every single day. She was hugging me, and I was hugging her, and then my homie approached me, and my homie asked me, my, my homie my home asked me, hey, uh, you want to go okay? You want to go grab some trees? And I was all like, hold on, I'm kicking on with my girl. and. Uh, the homie was impatiently waiting for me and said, come on, man, let's bounce, bro. And I kissed my girl goodbye and told her I love her, that I'll be back, just to uh, never show back up. And that night, when me and my homie was going through the streets, we uh, planned a robbery, and he was, like, eagerly trying to get some cash. And when we went to the skate park, we seen some white boys there kicking in. It seems like they were smoking weed. We showed up, and... That's when we started the robbery, and it was all the pride of being a part of the Tiny Rascals, and I screamed it out while I left to strike fear and intimidation to them. And when we had left, they called the police on us where we had got caught. And when we were getting both in in the police station, the police had violated my rights because they had read me my rights, and I said that I have the right to remain silent, and I wanted to remain silent. They brought me to the back, and when they had, uh, you know, asked me if I was a part of a gang, Tiny Rascals, I said I didn't want to speak. I didn't want to speak. So therefore, when they had brought me to the back to harass me, they violated my rights because I said I didn't want to speak anyways. And they, were just, they got me to admit it to being a part of the Tiny Rascals, which has two counts of the Tiny Rascals gang on my uh, my sentence to where I was. So high for 37 years, eight months, and yeah, that's basically what happened that day, Jane. Okay, so uh, they, they gave you gang enhancements, right? 
happened? They gave you gang enhancements, right? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, and those gang enhancements well, was like a whole bunch of time, huh? At it. Yeah, um, they call it 10 years each. Uh. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. You got any final words or anything else you want to say before the interview is uh, closed? So I just want to say to everybody and my viewers that's listening, man, my final words is, uh, you know, I've seen both sides walk, man, uh, being a part of gangs and then being brainwashed and being, you know, manipulated, you know what I'm saying? By how gang members interact with one each other to get people to set up their numbers to get deeper. You know, um, when you all alone, like how I was, I don't care how deep you is on the streets or who you think you are now, you're going to be alone. You're going to get tested. And This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. And like, truthfully for me, I seen that, you know what I'm saying? I was never scared. I always had a heart. If I see like five people that talk shit about me, I'm gonna rush them and I'm gonna scream tiny rats at the end. But what really matters is who's gonna take care of you at the end. It's your family, your loved ones. If your family's part of that game, then shit, there's only one way out and one way in. You know what I'm saying? Now that out is a body bag, but it's up to you to change your life. Ain't nothing fascinating. There ain't nothing, there ain't no future in this shit. And uh, look at me, I've been in here 13 years old on myself. I see both sides of the shit. When you drop out and when you were still pushing. But man, it's, it's a hard life. So for all you youth offenders out there or youth kids, people still in high school, I mean, I, 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 mean, I put it down. I just put it down out there in the streets, you know what I'm saying? I, I seen all kind of shit. Fascinating shit. We used to see guns by the crates and all that shit. Yeah, that shit's cool. But, you know, both of us on the block was broke as fuck, though. And, uh... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. I just want to let the little youngsters and the youth, uh, know out there at any time. If you guys find time, man, if, you know, you guys picking up a pencil, dropping down them guns, be intelligent with yourself. If you ever want to write to me, man, I'm open for uh, pen pals to let you guys know from my experience stay away from gangs uh, to inspire you guys maybe even to rap you know what I mean uh, and what you guys are probably wondering about what about you know rap about struggle you know what you guys need and you know uh, be on a positive tip bro and, you know you don't gotta always threaten or talk about how much the gun the ammo it can hold and all that um uh, you know, I'll be up in here, you know, like, talking about how much of a struggle, you know, you know, to put down the gun, to pick up the pencil, and, uh, yeah, it's been hard for me to try to get a hold of my family and myself, because, uh, I used to get into trouble, get into fights, going to add seg and shit, I've been losing contact with people, and, um, you know what I'm saying, like, I'm waiting to get out there though soon, and, I want to touch bases with a lot of the homies too, you know what I mean? And uh, help people change lives. And also, I want to like make a program where we keep in contact with the prison. So, you know, uh, be very organized to uh, help the guys and the individuals that got life and have no chance, that got L walk life without parole, where um, I can help them financially and keep them clean away from the prison, man, because I'm in here right now. and. Uh, I see a lot of my homies getting injected and all kind of stuff in their veins to get high, man, just to make it feel good, feel, uh, feel warm, you know what I mean, and, and not alone. But, man, it's a dangerous environment, you know what I mean? Shit, man, I'm gonna be able to get out there and just, you know, send the packages, man, like, don't cluck shit off, don't sell shit for drugs, man. Man, this, this place right here can take you to a whole nother, whole nother place, man. It's like hell on earth, you know, and this is not something you guys want to go for real. Like, I know you guys might be fighting on YouTube, showing videos that you got hands on me, but hey, if you really want to fight, go to a gym, train, fight for money, but it really matters, you know what I'm saying? Fight for the pros, bro. If you want a gun place, if it's the military, you know what I'm saying? Where you taking off, tipping off heads, and you logging that shit down, you know what I'm saying? Keeping it on a book, bro, where the military be like, that's a bad motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I just hope that shit touches out to you guys and the youth, man. Like, this gang banging life 
ain't really gonna get nowhere, bro. You know what I'm saying? You just gonna find yourself either dead or in prison, man. And if you get in the way, you get in the way, but you gotta watch over your back because it comes with a cost, man. You know what I'm saying? You have 60 seconds remaining. Um, do you got any shout outs for any uh, family and friends out here? Yeah, I do. I got a shout out for all the rascal homies. I got a shout out for all the Asians. I, I mean, keep your head up. I see everybody rapping out there. Uh, I get your rank up video. That shit tight as fuck. You know what I mean, um, for all the ladies out there, you know what I'm saying? You got to saw the samurai in there. I keep the G, you know what I'm saying? Um, my family, you know, even though a lot of you don't want to talk to me because I committed a crime when I was doing good in life playing football and doing martial arts. I'm giving a second chance. I'll be out there and drive you crazy. And other than that, see, I'm going to always be here doing my thing day by day. That's all I pretty much got to say. I'm going to wrap it up from here, man. And uh, shout out to Juki himself, man, for allowing me to do this. And, uh, you know, it's all good. Y'all keep your heads up out there.